All right, everybody, it's going to be an excellent show today. I have two intercontinental champions of film, television, dance, and DJing right here. I've got Tazia and Kaylani from the hit series Shorzy. We're going to get into it, but how are y'all doing? <laughs> doing awesome. <laughs> so excited to be here. Mm -hmm. Ready oh. to celebrate another season with y'all. Mm -hmm. Oh, me too. You know what? I've watched these first few episodes and I'm just in love with everything Shorzy, um, <laughs> which is interesting because I was at the North American premiere of Letterkenny. And before it got popular, I was telling everybody about Letterkenny. So now I'm very excited to tell everybody about Shorzy. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to yeah. talk about this season, especially this season just completely blew me away. So... Yeah, it's going to be good. Before we get into Shorzy, mm -hmm. like in the movie Sound of Music, we have to start at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Where did it all begin for you both in film and in TV? What was that spark? And please feel free to answer as you wish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, when I was a kid, I got into acting pretty quickly, actually. I just had a lot of energy. I loved the creativity part of it. I loved expressing myself and I started going in that direction, but then I quickly got sidetracked into soccer because soccer is my other love. So I became uh, a soccer player when I was really young and that took over until later on in life. And then when I was in university, I was getting my commerce degree and I was just getting nagged that you know, I had this love for acting that I never satisfied or never fu fully pursued. So I decided to take a couple acting classes in university. And I walked out of that acting class, like, you know, full of energy. And I called my mom and I said, Mom, I'm dropping out of commerce. I'm going to be an actress. It's going to be great. And she panicked. <laughs> and, um, but what I did is I gave myself a few years. I finished my degree, but then I gave myself a few years to um, study acting and see if this was something I could make a career out of. And once I started, things started rolling pretty quickly. So. And was it in that in that acting class? Was it like the warm ups? Was there like that moment where you're just like, holy shit, this is for me for forever? It felt like there was something I finally like felt just I could do. I felt like I was, it felt so natural. And I noticed myself being hyper curious and really engaged and aware and just alive in a different way that I hadn't felt before. You know, I felt really excited. I wanted to study all the time. I wanted to, you know, be in the library. I was really thrilled to be doing that work and learning about acting, whereas I didn't have that before. So I was right. telling, telling hey, Lonnie, was that the same I for love you? Were all you of called? those weaving together is for you, Tasia. <laughs> it's so good. It's such a journey. <laughs> it was. Was that the same for you, Kaylani? Where you called your mom was like, "I'm an actress I now." <laughs> <laughs> I, I would, I would say that my beginning started with um, storytelling through the form of dance. My mom taught us, me and my siblings, traditional hula. Um, which is Hawaiian dancing. And we grew up with that in the home. And that was definitely my foundation for just like that, that oral tradition, that movement, that, that embodiment of story. And I think that that just followed me through life. It's something that is part of me. And then it just keeps evolving into these new forms of what, what can that be? And it's taken me into music and storytelling through through music and DJ sets. And then it's taken me into this acting world where I'm really finding my voice. And that's been so healing. And, um, and now it's kind of transforming into writing. So I'm really excited about exploring down that pathway and, and directing some more as well. So I think it's just, um, yeah, constant metamorphosis and learning about myself. Right. No, I think that's super cool because I like that you said you like to tell story through dance, through your music, through your DJ sets, through directing and writing the both of you. What element or one of the your most precious elements you bring from that gift of telling a story you bring to Shorzy in your characters? Because there is a story there, like you're telling a story through these amazing characters, whether it be like a choreographed dance of violence on the ice or 
getting the team to go? Where, where is that for you both? For me with storytelling in terms of acting is it's, you know, there's so much to acting and that's why I find it just endlessly exciting to be an actress, but physical behavior really tells a good story. So finding how that character moves and like, what are the little gestures that she does? And especially like working with Jared because his physical comedy and his physical behavior is so strong. So it's really nice sometimes choreographing what the physical life is of a character and also finding the rhythm and the music in, in the words and in the scene, you know, there's a cadence and a flow to, especially his writing. So catching that surf or riding that wave with your colleagues together is super exciting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. I feel like to add to that would just be a parallel for me, I find in, in the artistry that I love and, and also in the show, there's that really big theme of like for the community, by the community. And it brings me back to my why and why I'm creating and why I'm an artist. And um, I feel like in a sense, we have, we have a word in Hawaiian called kuleana and it means responsibility. And it's just a beautiful way that we can give our gifts back to our communities. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And I love that you brought up the dialogue because as anybody who's watched Letterkenny and watched Shorzy, there's a cadence, there is a almost hip hop or rock and roll beat to the language. And how much fun do you have getting into that with everybody else? Like, do you just riff off each other? Do you play off each other so well when you finally find that beat? Do you just have an outer body experience? Like, holy shit, this is what it's all about. Yeah, I think you can definitely feel when you catch it, you know? And it does take a lot of rehearsal and it takes a lot of play and we get together quite a bit to go over it together. But it has this rhythm, like a hockey puck being passed around, you know, the ice almost, where it's like this person's talking, then this person's talking, then this person's talking. But um, it, it th that rhythm lives in the text and that's what makes the, his writing style so unique and so special. And Jared is a drummer. So, you know, I sometimes feel like that has helped inform his or develop or create the way that he writes because, you know, that special rhythm is definitely there, but um you know you know when you kind of like when when you get to a place where you've you've eased into it and everybody's just passing the puck and it's just completely seamless <laughs> you know yeah when you're in the pocket yeah I mean he even sets us up for it like we rehearsed by throwing a ball back and forth yeah. and just like then you can really feel it mm -hmm. that's super cool and with your characters in the third season right now I'm curious as an actor do you go back and watch previous seasons and then follow your character arc and bring something new to these characters? And like, oh, because, I mean, you both are leading the leaders of a team of like some crazy yet sweet team of guys on the ice and you're in charge of these. So how do you bring that, you know, transformation of uh, being badasses uh, to the third season? It is pretty cool. It is. A, it's like such a beautiful ride to be part of. I feel like I feel like the more time we spend together in real life, the more we kind of like dig into our characters. And especially with our trio, we've really like had a couple IRL moments where we're like, oh, my God, that was so Nat. That was so Zeke. And that was so Meek. And then it kind of just informs us as we head down our own our paths with these characters um, and just really finding that the balance between what we each kind of like bring to the dynamic and how we're, how we're guiding these troublemakers and these teammates and these, these boys. Yeah. And I mean, I definitely go back and watch my stuff and I sometimes, you know, some actors have a difficult relationship with that. And I don't know, I love the show so much. I love just watching all of the, comedy of the show um and I like to see where my characters go and I like to track where they go and Nat has developed from you know this girl who wasn't really sure that she could get the job done and and now she's kind of finding her essence she's finding her power she knows what she's doing a little bit more and so we see her confidence build throughout the seasons mm -hmm. that's awesome I like that um with 
this third season, it looked like a mainstay from Letterkenny and Shorzy, Jacob Tierney. Um, he, two, the duo of the Skeen brothers have directed the episodes and they came from like stunt work, right? Is that, uh, did you notice like any creative uh, differences as far as like the action and the hockey play this season with them involved as opposed to Jacob or Jacob still hands on? Well, we don't, we're not often there on the days where they're shooting the hockey stuff because okay. like they'll kind of isolate all of the hockey plays and get all the boys together and, and film that on separate days. So we're not even there for that. But, you know, every director has a different style and a different way of relating to the set. And so it was really nice to be working with Dan and Sean this year. They have so much experience with stunt work, which is high pressure and high, you know, it's a lot of um, rehearsing and a lot of uh, knowing how camera moves around the stunts to get the shots and stuff like that. So they have a tremendous amount of experience and they've been with the letter Kenny team the entire time. So awesome. they're, they're really familiar with the world. So it was really nice to be working with them. Yeah. That's they brought cool. such great energy yeah. and the brotherhood. I mean, that was a really, really awesome thing to witness. Yeah. And that's great. Be, yeah. Be working with. No, I want to talk to you both about, cause I'm, I'm interested in this and, all aspects of life, but fashion and TV shows and movies. Um, because Letter Kenny had its fashion, but I know y'all are both into fashion like I am. And <laughs> having this online kind of frenzy about the fashion of Shorzy with like relations to the suits, to the to the the hoodies and the jackets worn. There's like a fan base that are linking like things to buy from the show. I'm curious. I'm like, how, how, how do y'all like that? How do y'all like your wardrobe and the fashion and fitting into the character? Like when you put on the hoodie, when you put on the suit, are you just like, I'm this character now? Does that help? So much. I'm so grateful for Ginger. She's our, our head of costumes and she just always gives us such a, such a fun opportunity to play and to bring our own flavor to our characters. One thing that, I'll share with you guys that I was so excited about this season was um, she let me um, put our Clayton Tanay uh, like flag logo on one of my hoodies and she like printed it specially for me and then I got to wear it and rep it um, for one of the episodes and um, just to be able to hear the reactions from my family back home from Clayton Tanay um, and how proud they were to see that on the screen and like it it, it gives me shivers right now. And it's really, it's a really just wonderful way for us to wrap in different parts of us um, to our characters. I love yeah, that. Yeah, like having a team that's so collaborative and so open to the process of building out characters in, in a new show and developing that tone for the character together is such a gift. It's so nice. And this season for Nat, we, I mean, Ginger and I joke about Nat's style and how she is represented, like how she moves through the world and that she's, you know, someone who's still trying to figure it out, but she's, she's, she's almost there, but she really takes her cues off of the Quebecois girls. Cause they're just so darn fashionable, you know? So she's kind of secretly spying on them and like trying to imitate some of the things that they do, but maybe doesn't always get it right. <laughs> and I found that to be something that was really charming about Nat and another thing that we got to do this season was because Nat's hero is her mom, she is really trying to do good by her mom to get this hockey team and community alive and healthy again. Um, I was able to actually weave in some pieces from my mom's wardrobe. So I got to pepper in some little items this season, um, which is so wonderful. Like those little touches really connect you to the character and connect you to the story. And to your own self, like having those little insider moments that she's like, look, that's for you. That's, that's, yeah. that's cool that you get to do that. And do you get to keep any of these pieces? Or is that straight to the studio? <laughs> or something might there be? There might be one or two pieces. <laughs> of the you know, like a end of season gift sometimes yeah. pops up by surprise. <laughs> I like that. I like that. And, you know, the show is so funny and you know, the, the bits of comedy and the bits of drama are so well done. Um, how do you bridge that gap of drama and comedy in the show? Sometimes it really feels like you get lost in them together. 
-hmm. they, they, they turn into each other and it just becomes this like continuous um, circle that's like feeding, feeding around itself and feeding us. And I mean, I don't know. What'd you say, Tass? I mean, I think like staying connected to, you know, who you're playing opposite of is a big part of it and playing, making sure that you're living in the moment of the stakes, but balancing the comedy and drama is, you know, it, it's a, partly just lives in the script. It's partly the work that the actors do, do and it's partly getting direction from the directors just to help you make sure you cu customize the tone. But when you get to set on the day, it becomes clear what are those moments that need a little bit more groundedness and what are those moments that are just like foolish play where you just get right. to let loose and, you know, enjoy the ride that day. <laughs> no, that's, that's good. And like with the funnier <laughs> moments, was there a, a part or a sequence from season three that you went through that you just couldn't get it on the day because you were laughing too much I that honestly, you remember all the time. It happens <laughs> all the time. It happens a lot. I would say one of my favorite ones was the commercial. Yeah, me too. The boys have to shoot this commercial and it is... Oh, was that the truck commercial? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That was genius. <laughs> yeah, that was good. And then, I mean, in season two, there was the part where he shows up with a spray tan. <laughs> oh my Remember god he yes. goes up to the photo shoot and we turn around and he walks in with sunglasses on and just <laughs> orange skin and he's like what i'm not like did you get a spray tan <laughs> <You know? laughs> and that whole i was having such a hard time just like looking at him straight being like well what's going on here <laughs> you know and um throw back to the Dennis is sexy and like his oh my his dreams of the three of them taking turns wailing on him that day was impossible that was probably the the worst yeah. to get through yeah that was another tough one. <laughs> oh, that's good I actually it's so funny I have I have come across a couple of comments on social media where people are like Meg are you like actually breaking or is this a character <laughs> choice like tell us the truth here and I think I'm just really grateful that it can be one in the same. <laughs> well, there was that one, that one moment this season where he's imitating how, how to behave as a girl getting a a, a part of a fine, like a, a speeding ticket. Yeah. That cracked me up for days. Like anytime I watch that moment, have you seen that? The, the, the speeding ticket one? Or are you yeah. Speeding ticket yeah. one. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that one I just <laughs> found so funny. The mm. first time we read that one out loud, that was... Oh, yeah. freaking hilarious <laughs> that's awesome and you brought up like the social media aspect of it because you've seen so many fan bases of so many franchises either become toxic or not but letter kenny and shorzy it's just it's full of praise and love from the fans do y'all see that online and how do y'all feel about that well it's like this beautiful mirror of the culture that it, jared creates on set you know there's just so much it really does feel like a family and that doesn't happen in every TV show, but this one, it just, we operate as a family. We're excited to see each other. Everyone is so helpful and supportive of each other. And there's really good vibes on set and everyone treats each other with respect. And, and then you see that reflected in the fan base, which means a lot. And it's just so beautiful. And I'm so grateful for it. It makes me cry a little bit. Like when Shorzy hears the national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it touches me. Great. So oh, I, I love the Shorzy fam so much. Uh, I love that. Uh, the show is known for its music choices. It's such, it's so good. This season is full of hip hop and great stuff. Uh, your characters, I don't know if you prepare this way, but do your characters or do you personally pick playlists to listen to to get into character or when you're on set and what songs are you listening to and character that you like, especially you being a DJ? <laughs> <laughs> well honestly like I list the soundtrack that Jared puts into the scripts because they're always so good mm -hmm. and I think that that is the window in for sure yeah I always use music for my work with characters you know it just helps so much it just gets you there right away I listen to a lot of I mean for that I'm listening to a lot of Beyonce I'm listening to a lot of those kind of you know 
funky girl anthems about running the world and you know, yeah. that kind of business. Those, those, those ones that pump you up, uh, those I find really effective. Yeah. That's awesome. And I got, I have a question for you, uh, Tazia. Is it true? Cause I was at the premiere for this movie and I may be one of your first things you did. Were you an assistant producer on the ABCs of death? Yes. Yeah. I was at the premiere of that movie. Oh my gosh. I love that. So like you got your producing stuff and you're in the big time actor now. Like what, yes. tell me how that came about because those little vignettes are super cool and you came from horror and what's that like? Yeah. I mean, you know, that's at the beginning where you're just starting to learn about how to put projects together and, and all the different parts of the film industry. And there's so many moving parts and it's really beautiful how the collaboration exists that you just you have to work with all the different departments and I'm a, I'm a natural producer like I I you know I have a few restaurants I had opened one in Vancouver and two in Toronto and so that kind of like organizing things and creating schedules and budgets and all that kind of business it comes naturally to me so it was great to start off my career that way and then go through the creative flow of being an actress and then you know soon I'll be back producing stuff again as well that's awesome definitely <laughs> very cool uh this is an actually a serious question for Kehlani if you don't mind um out of any movie out there uh any movie is there a movie that in order for it to be better needs a crossbreed of a mermaid and a unicorn oh I didn't know you were gonna get so deep on me just there <laughs> It's a big one, Brian. <laughs> okay, wait, Kate. A crossbreed between a mermaid and a unicorn to make it better. Yeah. I mean, pretty much everything. <laughs> In what world would you say no to that? Right. <laughs> Actually. Okay. <laughs> I may or may not have had uh, an experience with and I remember calling my sisters being like a, you know twinkly we'll say I was twinkly at the time and I was like you guys I just love you so much I just need to tell you how much I love you and it's like it's like you're so special to me like you're you're like a mermaid like a unicorn a mermaid like a mermicorn you guys are my mermicorns <laughs> oh <laughs> you just brought that flashing back to me so I had to tell you that story I'm glad. I'm glad. And I don't see what movie needs that to make it better. Is it like Sleepless in Seattle or is it, you know. Oh, that'd be a good fit. <laughs> that'd, that'd be a good fit. Oh, like, like that, that, just to like spice it up a little. Just, oh, right. Yeah. All right. And so, Tazia, <laughs> since you talked about your opening restaurants and you love to cook, what's the best meal you would make your friends if they were to watch the movie The Princess Bride? <gasps> I would make them a Thanksgiving dinner because that movie is so solid and so perfect. And I would just sit there and watch it with them three times in a row. I also love cooking Thanksgiving dinner. So, or like a turkey dinner of some sort, you know, Christmas dinner, whatever it may be. But I would do all the mashed potatoes. I would do all the salads. I would, I would make like a big moment of it because I just love that movie. It's the perfect movie. <laughs> I'm there. No, I know. That's why I said as you wish at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. All right. I've got a couple more questions. Uh, quick ones. All right. For both of you. Tazia, what's the strangest thing you've put Nutella on? And Kehlani, what's the strangest thing you've put pineapple on? I mean, that's a long list, I would have to say. There's a long list of strange things I've put Nutella on. Popcorn is one of them, which was more like the popcorn on the Nutella. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> what else have I tried? I'm going to say a strong comment here about this. And uh -oh. I feel like some people might argue with me, but I will just say that I haven't put pineapple on anything strange because pineapple goes with everything. <gasps> oh, even <laughs> chili? Like yeah perfect citrus and savory with yeah. chili Be yeah good. with chili like <laughs> chili? pineapple on a lot of things <laughs> that's new <laughs> the citrus see oh no i like it i like that all right my last question for you both um you're obvious that in all aspects you're you're 
tell me the story cinematic aficionados over here that i'm talking with and that's super cool are there any particular scenes in movies that have always stuck with you that help shape your creative life that you wake up and you think of this scene and you're just like i'm ready to go to work i'm ready to do the day mm. Mm. this is a good one i'm excited to hear from tass about this one <laughs> i think for me it tracks it tracks to a recent influence that I really, really admire and dream of working with, um, Ava DuVernay. Anything mm. that she's done, um, I just watched Origin, and there are so many just incredible moments in that film that I just, I, I feel, yeah, so deeply impacted by and so inspired by. So I, I would say her as like a whole and then this most recent um inspiration would be origin nice okay mm -hmm. cool Tyler. i mean a long time ago i really fell in love with love actually and yeah. there was um this one scene where emma thompson is she just fangs out um some bad news about her husband and she has to go out to with her children to this play at the end of the movie. And she went through this whole emotional roller coaster of the, like the discovery of the bad news and then trying to like calm down. And you can really see her heart breaking in the fluctuations of all of these moments. Like it was so alive and it was so captivating to watch. And then she takes a breath and she, she, she calms herself down and she brushes it off and she walks out the door. And in that moment, I just felt like I really understood, you know, what it's like to be a parent and what it's like to be a mother and what it means to put on a brave face, no matter what, you know, you're going through at that time. And I was just taken by that moment that she did so much. I, I really loved that. I love that. Oh, that's I, I didn't expect that answer. And that's such a great realistic scene in that movie. And it's yeah. just it's perfect. All right. One, one more from you. What's the best scene in Princess Bride? Oh man, you're going to make me pick? <laughs> oh. I mean, what are you going to, what, do you have a favorite scene? Oh, it's anything with Billy Crystal. <laughs> you know, those, that's actually a fantastic response. Um, I love the Billy Crystal scenes. I love, I love so many moments. It's really hard to pick one. That's an impossible yeah. question to answer. <laughs> well, thank you. As you wish. Thank you so much, Shorzy. Season three is awesome. Thank you for taking the time to chat and answer all the fun questions. Thank you, Brian. Brian thanks so much, so much for having time. us. That was so great. Thank you. So thank, you thank you very much.